According to the FBI, the definition of serial killing is the unlawful killing of two or more victims by the same offender or offenders in separate events. This definition can vary throughout the world, but serial killers and those they kill can be anyone. In the early hours of January 15, 1978, serial killer Ted Bundy entered the Chi Omega sorority house on the campus of Florida State University. Over the next 15 minutes, he brutally assaulted Margaret Bowman, Lisa Levy, Kathy Kleiner, and Karen Chandler. Thankfully, both Kathy and Karen survived the assault. Also surviving was student Cheryl Thomas, whom Bundy attacked eight blocks away after leaving Chi Omega. Also on January 15th, but four years earlier in 1974, Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, killed the first four of his ten victims. On that day, he killed four members of the Otero family, Father Joseph, Mother Julie, 11-year-old Josephine, and 9-year-old Joseph Jr. Fortunately, Otero siblings Charlie, Danny, and Carmen were not home at the time and were not injured. The day his family was killed, eldest sibling Charlie was 15 years old. As of this video publication, Charlie is 63 years old. He has had many demons to overcome over the years. Also at the age of 15 years, Craig Chandler Price of Rhode Island murdered Joan Heaton and her two daughters aged 10 and 8 on July 27th of 1987. Price stabbed the three ladies a total of 149 times. In addition, Price had killed another woman two years earlier when he was 13. Although sentenced as a juvenile at the time, Price remains in custody to this day due to his continued erratic behavior. And now for today's most smartest question. Which serial killer referred to himself as the most cold-hearted son of a bitch you'll ever meet? Was it John Wayne Gacy, Ted Bundy, Richard Ramirez, or Ed Kemper? We'll get back to that in a minute. On August 27, 1964, Edmund Kemper killed both of his parents by shooting them. According to Kemper, he killed his grandmother to see what it felt like, and he killed his grandfather so he wouldn't find out about Grandma. Kemper was 15 at the time. On June 24, 2002, Kara Robinson Chamberlain was abducted and continually raped by serial killer Richard Ivanitz. Showing terrific determination and drive, Kara was able to escape Ivanitz the next day. How old was Kara at the time? You guessed it. She was 15. Kara spent several years in law enforcement and today Kara is a motivational speaker while Ivanovitz is dead. How did he die? Who cares? Again on July 24th, but in 1962, Sean Vincent Gillis was born. Why do these guys so often have three names? Gillis was seemingly not satisfied with just being called serial killer. He was also a rapist, cannibal, stalker, kidnapper, and necrophile. In addition to other crimes, Gillis ended the lives of eight women in Louisiana between 1994 and 2004. Again on June 24, but this time in 1978, Rodney Alcala took the life of Charlotte Lamb in California. Charlotte was Alcala's fifth of eight known victims. There were probably more. Alcala was also known as the dating game killer due to the fact that during his killing spree, he actually appeared on TV's The Dating Game, and he won. The young lady refused the date as she found Alcala creepy. Good call. Alcala died in prison on July 24, 2021. Good. While California has, by far, the highest number of serial killer victims as of 2021, with 1,628, Alaska has the highest rate of victims per capita at 7.04 victims per 100,000 people. Hawaii is the lowest per capita at 0.71 per 100,000 people. That doesn't mean that Hawaii is free of serial killers. Nope, the first known serial killer in Hawaii was known as the Honolulu Strangler, or the Honolulu Rapist. He is known to have killed five ladies between 1985 and 1986. Oh, did I say was known as the Honolulu Strangler? I should say is. This serial killer has never been identified. Being an unidentified serial killer is not as unusual as you might think. Law enforcement does not always get their man. California's Zodiac Killer is perhaps the most well-known of this group. However, there are at least 40 more killers in the U.S. alone who have never been identified. The worst five who remain unidentified in the U.S. are 
the Atlanta Ripper who killed 15 women in 1911, the doodler who stabbed to death 14 gay men in San Francisco in the 1970s, the Cleveland Torso murderer killed 13 in the 1930s, the West Mesa murderer between 2003 and 2009 where 11 women were killed, and the Long Island serial killer who killed 10 people between 1996 and 2010. A self-professed serial killer who may have been involved in some cases that need to be added to the unidentified list is Albert DeSalvo, also known as the Boston Strangler. DeSalvo confessed to killing 13 women between 1962 and 1964. However, over the last several years, doubt has arisen that DeSalvo was involved in all of these rapes and murders. There can be no doubt that DeSalvo was a monster, but did he commit all of these crimes? Did a murderer escape justice because of DeSalvo's confessions? The world often looks at the United States as the home of serial killers. The U.S. certainly leads the world with 68% or 0.99 per capita of known serial killers, but the rest of the world has had many. It is not just a U.S. phenomenon. Per capita, the next five countries in the world would be Australia at 0.33, Great Britain at 0.30, Canada at 0.29, Scotland at 0.28, and Austria at 0.25. Some of the most prolific serial killers and their proven number of victims from around the world include Dr. Harold Shipman from England killed 250 of his patients. Luis Garavito from Colombia killed 138 homeless boys. Mikhail Povkov from Russia, nope, not Chikatilo. Povkov killed 78 women while Chikatilo killed 53 people. Javed Iqbal from Pakistan killed 100 children. Kampadamar of India killed 70 and Yang Xinha from China killed 67 because his girlfriend broke up with him. In fact, of the top 20 most prolific known serial killers in the world, four are from Russia, three each from Colombia and Brazil, two each from India, China, and the US, and one each from Pakistan, Indonesia, Canada, the UK, and South Africa. The FBI and behavioralists from around the world have identified seven common myths regarding serial killers. Myth. Serial killers are all dysfunctional loners. In fact, serial killers are often your next door neighbor. Myth. Serial killers are all white males. Actually, the racial diversification of serial killers generally mirrors that of the overall U.S. population. Myth. Serial killers are only motivated by sex. Nope. Other common motivators are anger, financial gain, attention seeking, and perhaps most cringeworthy, just the thrill of it. Myth. All serial killers operate in several states to avoid capture. Actually, most serial killers have a very defined area of operation around their home or work. Myth? Serial killers cannot stop killing. Very often they do for years at a time. For example, BTK Dennis Rader stopped killing in 1991 but was not arrested until 2005. Myth? All serial killers are insane or geniuses. Mental health and intelligence mirrors that of the rest of the general population. And the final myth, serial killers want to get caught. While it may appear that way, it is not that serial killers want to get caught, they feel that they can't get caught, so they tend to start making mistakes leading to their arrest. Although the majority of serial killers do stay close to home, a notable exception is Delmas Heavy Colvin, also known as the Interstate Strangler. Colvin claims to have killed up to 52 women between 1983 and 2005 while he was an over-the-road trucker. Colvin does not remember how many he killed, nor in how many states. The first time that Colvin was captured and convicted, he was sentenced to 15 years. Colvin has also been vocal about how well he slept and dreamed each night after murdering. Serial killers have many excuses for why they committed their acts or what made them do it. Russian Andrei Chikatilo says he always dreamed of and thought he deserved a better life, so felt a bit superior to others. Therefore, when he saw others that were as lowly as him, it reminded him of his feelings, so he killed them and in some cases ate them. Also, his first known sexual assault was of a 15-year-old girl in May of 1973. And today's most smartest answer is Ted Bundy, also known as the Lady Killer and the Campus Killer, thought very highly of himself. His victims were also generally between ages 15 and 25. Although serial killer Henry Lee Lucas is more well known, his partner in crime Otis Toole was perhaps more horrific. 
Known as the Jacksonville Cannibal, Toole claims to have killed over 100 people. Toole also barbecued then ate people. Toole died in prison on September 15, 1996. Lucas had a relationship with Toole's niece. She was 15 at the time. Henry Lee Lucas once stated that he personally was not a cannibal because he didn't like the taste of Toole's barbecue sauce. Another serial killer who liked the taste of human flesh was Russia's Tamara Samsonova, also known as the Granny Ripper. She was arrested in 2015 at the age of 68. Over the previous 20 years, she is supposed to have killed and tasted at least 11 people, including her best friend and her husband. Another prolific female killer you may have never heard of was Romanian Bear Rainsy, who was active during the 1920s. While there is not too much available information on Rainsy, she is believed to have poisoned, so didn't eat, 38 victims, including both of her husbands, her son, and her various lovers, the first of which was when she was 15. There's that age again. Poison is often considered a weapon of women. One of the first known female serial killers in the U.S. was Lida Southard, who poisoned four of her husbands, her brother-in-law and her daughter, by extracting the arsenic from flypaper so she could collect on life insurance policies. She killed her daughter in 1915. In 1921, she was sentenced to life in prison, but was released after 20 years. She immediately remarried, and he disappeared two years later. No kidding. A notable exception to men using poison was H. H. Holmes. He is famously known as America's first serial killer. At Chicago's World Fair in 1893, Holmes lured as many as 200 victims to the hotel he owned. He admitted to killing 27, but was only convicted for one murder. Holmes had fitted many of the hotel rooms with gas lines so he could fill the rooms with gas to asphyxiate his victims. He was also known to use poison. He killed hotel guests, his staff, and many of his lovers in an attempt to collect life insurance, just like Lida Southern. Recently, new allegations have surfaced that H.H. H. Holmes might have actually been England's Jack the Ripper, or at least was responsible for several murders attributed to Jack the Ripper. He is attached to the number 15 as well. When he was hung, the rope did not snap his neck. He twitched for 15 minutes prior to dying, according to eyewitnesses. You've all heard of Jack the Ripper, so let's go a different direction. While Jack the Ripper gets all of the serial killer focus in the UK, arguably the worst ever in England were Fred and Rosemary West. It is difficult to know where to begin with this couple. Robbery, rape of their own daughters as young as eight years old, who became pregnant when she was 14, beating to death their own children, and rape and murder of at least eight young women that Rosemary lured to their house, I won't say home. Fred and Rosemary did these horrible things over 20 years starting in the early 1970s. Fred took the coward's way out and killed himself before trial. Rosemary is still serving out her 10 murder convictions. Fred dropped out of school when he was 15. Rosemary's mother took Rosemary out of the abusive home where her father was sexually abusing her. Rosemary chose to return to her abusive father when she was 15. Nearly as detestable as the Wests are Canada's Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Paul met his future wife when she was 17 years old and he was 23. Apparently, Paul was unhappy when he learned that Carla was not a virgin. Carla eventually solved this by offering her husband her 15-year-old sister, who was a virgin. I really was not trying to find 15 this often. Paul and Carla drugged and tied up her sister. Paul raped her and then the couple went to bed, allowing the still tied up and drugged 15-year-old girl to choke and die on her own vomit. The couple did pretty much the same thing to several other young girls, even while Paul kept raping other girls. Many of the rape victims and murder victims were also 15 years old. Oh, and they also were fond of taping their crimes. As I mentioned earlier, serial killers come in all races, religions, and creeds, and have a taste for all types of victims. Serial killers come in couples. Serial killers also come in older couples. In 1989, Ray and Faye Copeland from Missouri became the oldest people ever sent to death row. Early in life, Ray decided that the way to make money was a new form of cattle rustling. Buy the cattle with a bad check, sell the cattle for cash really fast, and move on. As they got older, they started having drifters buy the cattle with the bad checks for them. Then they would sell the cattle, and then Ray put a bullet in the drifter's head. Faye would use the drifter's clothes to make quilts. They killed five people. Remember, just because they look like grandparents 
doesn't mean they don't suck. So, who was the most dangerous serial killer in U.S. history? According to the FBI, it was Samuel Little, also known as the Choke and Stroke Killer. It is confirmed that Little killed 50 people, making his gruesome number higher than John Wayne Gacy, the Green River Killer Gary Ridgway, and Ted Bundy. Little personally claimed that he killed 93. He was convicted in 2012 and died in prison on December 30th, 2020. Who are the serial killers that are still alive and haunting our nightmares? The killer clown John Wayne Gacy, the Green River Killer Gary Ridgway, BTK Dennis Rader, serial killer nurse Charles Cullen, the Golden State Killer Joseph James D'Angelo, the son of Sam David Berkowitz, Atlanta Child Killer Wayne Williams, by the way his average victim was 15 years old, nurse Kristen Gilbert, Britain's Angel of Death nurse Beverly Allett, and as mentioned earlier Paul Bernardo and Rosemary West, just to name a few. As I said at the top, serial killers and those they kill can be anyone.